Any medical opinions expressed in this program are not endorsed by any doctor or medical professional. They should not be taken as medical advice and may or may not be accurate. If you experience an erection lasting more than four okay, hours, please see okay. your doctor. Hello. There are a lot of bugs out here. But my name is Samantha, and this is my boyfriend, Gray. And I'm the here... The largest bug of all. <laughs> I am here to explain how the surgery for the egg retrieval went. I have another video that explains all the other parts of the egg retrieval. What? <laughs> Basically the whole process up until the surgery, um, but the day of the surgery was actually kind of a little bit more interesting just because I was on drugs and... <laughs> it's always more interesting when you're on drugs, kids. And I was a jerk to the nurse, apparently. You she... called her dumb. I didn't call her dumb. I called the... I kind of called her dumb. Be nice to nurses. This is weird. You're weird when you're on camera. I told you. So I brought him along for this video because I was on drugs for a lot of the day when I had the surgery. She was on drugs, apparently. <laughs> I, they gave me drugs, and I don't remember things because it was anesthesia, so he remembers more. We were supposed to get there at 7.30. Everything is super time sensitive with this because I needed to get my trigger shot at like a certain time and then they need to do the surgery at a certain time or else like things don't work. We ended up getting there a little bit late because we were... Okay, wait, hold on. On drugs. <laughs> So we got there at 7.38. Gray was there, and my mom was there, and my dad was there. There's a special room in the hospital that is the in vitro fertilization suite where they take out and put back in <laughs> eggs. That's true. It has a special doorbell so that they know you're there. It does. It does have a doorbell. So we ring the doorbell, and this nurse opens the door. She's like, oh, hey. And she's like rushing me in because she's like, it's 7.38. And She's like, you can only have one person in here with you. She's like, who is it going to be? And I'm like, ah. And she's like, do you want your mom? And I was like, Sh sure. And so then they close everybody else out. I don't have a chance to like say anything. She's like, you need to completely undress and put on the robe. So I go into the bathroom and I do that. And then I come back out. She already started annoying me at the beginning just because she was like rushing me and telling me I could only have one person in the room even though I don't know why. There was plenty of room for multiple people in the room. No, there wasn't <laughs> because it was you and the other person plus all the doctors and nurses. Yeah, but there was like a chair. Okay. There was like a chair. There wasn't that much space, but... Correct. There could have been two people. I was a little annoyed at her. I didn't try to get here late, so... Calm down. She has me on this bed and she's like taking my blood pressure and doing all the stupid stuff that they have to do beforehand. They try to put the IV in. They had been taking blood from my veins every single day and I had nothing left. I had bruising everywhere. She was trying to do it and it didn't work. And she was like, I'm gonna get somebody else. So they got somebody else to do it and she did it. But it was like really annoying because they were like poking around for forever. Was I crying when you came in? Yes, <laughs> you were crying when I came in. I started getting overwhelmed because I was thinking about how uh, I didn't say anything to Gray before this happened and also my dad and they were just shoved out of the room. So my mom kind of looks at me. She's like, hey, do you want me to ask if Gray can come in? And I was like, not saying anything because I didn't want her to have to leave. Then I was like, yeah, swap out with him because apparently you both can't be in here. And you came in. You were crying. <laughs> I wasn't crying that bad though. No, you weren't, but you were upset. I was annoyed. I was you mainly know, annoyed. I don't remember exactly what they were doing. I think they kept trying to kick me out, right? Because they like, needed the space. The nurse asked me, who do you want in the room when you wake up? They were like, do you want Gray or your mom? I was like, can I have both? She was like, okay, you know what, whatever. Uh, we'll just figure it out later. You're dead. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, he didn't care. <laughs> he was just there. <laughs> and I knew that. And I knew he cared the least. Like, he was fine. What? Not, not the least about me. Like, the least about being in the room. Your dad loves you, Samantha. I know. You have a great dad. I do. A rad dad. <laughs> so you left as they were willing me off. The Samantha Reed Show is not underwritten by any doctor nor medical board. <laughs> We can neither confirm nor deny the medical accuracy of any information presented in this program. Don't try this at home. How do they do the surgery? They, they put a needle thing into my ovaries and... They attach 
Oh, you know. A needle of some kind to a transvaginal ultrasound Ugh. device. Yeah. Which doesn't look comfortable, but I don't know. I've never had a transvaginal ultrasound. They remove all of the eggs from your follicles. Yes, and then they discover afterwards which ones are the mature ones, and they keep those and freeze them. For more information on Samantha's follicles and ovaries, please watch her previous video linked here. <laughs> Can you do that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> they wheel me out of the room, I guess, after the surgery. I woke up, no one was in there, except for the nurse. And I was like, can um, I have people come in now? And she was like, no, not yet. And I was like, why? And she was like, because we need to make sure that you're okay first. So I just kept asking why, because I didn't have a lot of energy to like put a lot of thought into sentences. There's a lot of birds. And then... Birds aren't real. Government conspiracy. Look it up. Birdsaren'treal.com. Oh my gosh. Finally, finally, she lets me have Gray and my mom come in. We came into the room. I remember you being pretty loopy on the drugs and pretty sleepy. And I don't remember everything that happened, but I have a few recollections of you being difficult. A number of times they asked her to rate her pain on a scale of 1 to 10. What does that mean? And you asked why, and they said so you could compare the pain and determine whether you're feeling better or worse. And you said, that's dumb. It's so And the nurse dumb. argues with her, saying, no, that's not dumb, we need to do that to determine whether you hurt more now than you did before the surgery or right when you came after the surgery to figure out if it, you're doing the better. The scale is dumb. The scale itself is dumb. And how do you know what a 10 feels like? You don't. So you said three. I said three. You said two. And they said, well, last time you said three, so that's good. Oh. And they took it very seriously, though, of course, I'm sure you just threw out they random numbers both times. <laughs> both times I just said random numbers. The whole time you had a blood pressure cuff on your right arm. Yes. And you kept your arm bent. And you had your phone with you. And you were using your arm. You were texting or Snapchatting on your phone. And every few minutes, the machine would take a blood pressure reading. Mm -hmm. And of course, you get the wrong number, I think, if, it, if your arm is bent. So they kept having to tell you to lower your arm back down throughout the course of the reading. And you'd immediately pick it back up again, and the nurse would have to grab your arm and push it back down flat. <laughs> I don't remember that. And so eventually, I just grabbed your hand. I was sitting there by the bed holding your hand. Really? Yes. Because you're awesome, but also to keep your arm straight so they could take a blood pressure reading. <laughs> didn't know that. <laughs> Meanwhile, she's Snapchatting everybody she knows about her ovaries being massive. I don't think it's a good idea for her, while high on anesthesia, to be texting everybody about how massive her ovaries are, but I don't fight it too hard. She can do whatever she wants. <laughs> I'm also holding her hands so that they can take a good blood Snapchat pressure reading. I only told my Snapchat streaks, okay? But now everybody knows, so that's, that's good. That's important They had no idea what I was talking about. Some people asked questions and some people were just like, whatever. Well, some people had no idea what you were doing. They didn't know Most anything about your egg retrieval process, and they get a Snapchat that says, my ovaries are massive, <laughs> which is great. That's great news. <laughs> They were so massive. It we were was all so very annoying. proud of them. They were like making me bloated and just... The nurse said they would be grapefruit sized. Was that about what you experienced? I don't know how to feel my ovaries. Then you kept trying to get up out of the bed because you wanted to go home I was right so... then. I was ready right to go there. home. This is a common theme when I have surgery. I always, when I get up, I think that I'm totally fine. And I usually am. And I just want to leave. But they required you to eat and drink something first. They kept asking you what you wanted to eat, and you wouldn't give them an answer. You said you just, like wanted, you just want to leave. I don't want to eat anything. What do you want to eat? I don't care. But then they asked if you wanted peanut butter crackers, and you said, fine. So they brought you I like peanut, butter crackers. peanut butter crackers and water, and you ate three peanut butter crackers and half a cup of water. So for the next, what would you say, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour? Or so, we're sitting there by the bed. Really? It took that long? It was at least 30 minutes. Oh my gosh, that's why I wanted to leave so And bad. you kept trying to sit up, and then eventually, you get so impatient, they decide, okay, we're going to have you urinate, since that's apparently something they have to test after this surgery. Yeah. Here First she says, you can go into the bathroom, and you can pee, put on clothes from the waist down. And I'm like, why can't I put on all my clothes? And she's like, well, you're hooked up to the IV, and you're hooked up to everything, so, um, I'm going to help you put on all the rest of your clothes. And I'm like, why can't you just take the IV out and then I can put on the rest of my clothes? And she was like, no, I'm supposed to help you. She told me, she's like, when you come back out, I'm going to, I'm going to take the IV out. And I'm like, okay, so why does it matter if you take the IV out 
now or three minutes from now. She was just being annoying and wanted to make my life miserable. That's correct. The nurse was annoying and wanted to make Samantha's life miserable. She hated me. She has no genuine respect for your health and safety. <laughs> the nurse helps Samantha into the bathroom. Of course, Samantha doesn't I like don't being want helped her into help. the bathroom. <laughs> and takes a very, very long time in there. <laughs> And then comes out fully dressed with an IV still attached to her arm. So apparently some people have trouble peeing after. I went in and I immediately peed. I didn't have any trouble. And hey. so then I... What? I'm proud of you. Thank you. So I put on my clothes from the waist down. Like before I even went in there, I was like, I'm going to put on all my clothes. I can dress myself. I've been doing it for a very long time. And so it was very annoying because I had to take the whole IV bag off of the thing and weave it through the, the hospital gown and take it off and then like weave it through my like t-shirt and everything. And it took, it took a little bit of time. Apparently the nurse is out there saying, you know, it's really good that she's in there trying really hard to pee. She was very impressed with your determination to pee. To which my mom is knows exactly what I'm doing. So I come out. The nurse then says something along the lines of, you thought you could sneak that by me. Which I did. Then she, then she took the IV out, which I don't know why she couldn't have done a few minutes before, but whatever. Because of the nature of the surgery. They told me a bunch of things that I was not allowed to do. Things including drinking alcohol and which uh, I never do. eating spicy food. Which I hate and I can't handle. I think we're going to leave it there. None of the things that they prohibited her from doing are things that she ever does. I'm kind of rolling my eyes a little bit. She looks at me and she's like, no, seriously, you really can't do that. And I was just like, I hate you. We were also giving you a hard time. Poor you. <laughs> you can't do any of those things that you love so much. <laughs> the nurse thinks she's laughing because she's not going to take the advice seriously. But she's actually laughing because she doesn't actually do any of the things listed. I think you said something like... I pretty much said she never does any of that. Yeah, they kept asking me, do you want your dad to come in? And I kept saying no, because I didn't want... I didn't want the process to take any longer. I didn't want them to have to, like, have my dad come in and then, like, somebody else swap out because that would just take forever. I just wanted to leave. Okay, so finally, after all of that, we were able to leave after I yelled at the nurse enough. That poor nurse, you know, it was it was her fault for being dumb. I'm not being serious. She's she was fine. She's very nice. Yeah. She's very professional, and she has a bedside manner. I'm sure that works for most of her normal patients. <laughs> One that is caring and respectful, but just Whoa. doesn't work for Samantha, I guess. Yeah, I just want things to move quick. You know, just get me in, get me out. I'm I'm done. We found out that they retrieved 29 eggs and then 17 of them were mature and were able to be frozen. Which is awesome. That's which, like a bunch, which, I think. Which is great because I was only allowed to do one cycle of this. Uh, a lot of times people do multiple, but I could only do one because I am a cancer patient and I had to start chemotherapy as soon as possible. So Here. April 2nd was the day that I had the egg retrieval surgery and then I started chemo on April 5th. Okay, so that was basically the story of my uh, egg retrieval surgery. And if you want any more information on egg, egg retrieval, you can ask a medical professional or you can watch my other video. I explain a lot more of the whole process coming up to the surgery and all of that. Yes. It. Click here to see Samantha's last video. <laughs> Click here to subscribe. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> now you have to put those buttons there. I do. I will put those buttons there. These deer are adorable. No, you. That's where you stop the video. <laughs>